Okay, hey everyone. Today we're doing a quick little tutorial. Well, not really a tutorial. Well, I guess kind of a basic tutorial about power levels in your ship. So let's beam up to my new ship. Yay. And here's a lovely little loading screen of space. Alright, here's my ship. And let's um actually let's get out of here. And here's a lot of other ships too. This ship, by the way, is the one that you get from doing the um, summer event, the daily task, 25 times. And you get this ship, which is a Vorgon dreadnought cruiser thing. See, so check it out. Now let's get away from the planet so these windows go away because they distract me. There. Alright. This is your ship, and these are your ship power levels. Your UI may look different from mine since mine's been moved around a bit. But anyways, you know, here's the users after your shields, your hull, all that cool stuff, your weapons, front arc, rear arc. This ship, as you can see, has a lot of rear arc weapons. These are special, like, um, abilities that come with the ship. This is a command type ship. So it has attract fire and it has weapon system efficiency. Now these are either or abilities. You use one or the other or none of them. Um, then we have these up here which are these buttons here. This is also a carrier so I can launch little fighters to protect me. So it only has one hanger so I can only have six of them out. And then we have our power levels. So let's talk about power levels and what they do. Well, first, as you can see, there's four of them. They are weapons, shields, engine, and then this last one is the auxiliary battery. And what they do is like, well, weapons obviously affect your weapons. Not your torpedoes, but your energy weapons like phaser banks and disruptor beams and plasma turrets and stuff like that. If it, if it has, well, for example, if it has the, um, let's look at this one right here. Yeah, I see this one, how it says uh, two, right, minus 10 weapon power to self while this weapon is firing. Okay, see, if it uses power, then it, then it is affected by this. So your torpedoes, they don't, they don't, they don't have that. See, nothing on the, on the torpedoes mentions that you have minus 10 power to self while it's firing because they don't use that weapon's power. So if you were to load up this ship with nothing but torpedoes and mines, you'd be okay. You wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to worry about this. This would do nothing to you. But... For things like you know, my, my beam arrays and whatnot, the higher this number, the more damage you'll do after 50. 50 is the standard. Um, it can go up to, I think the maximum is 125 unless you have something that actually allows you to exceed that. Uh, does this one have that? This one does not have that. Hmm. What about this one? Does this one have that? Hmm. This one does not have that either. One of my characters somewhere has... Oh, wait, maybe this, this one? No. Well, anyways, one of my characters somewhere has a, um, a warp core or a singularity core, depending on what type of ship you have, has one that actually allows your shields to go past the maximum, which I believe is 125. Um, if you have a, a warp core that will allow you to see that, it'll say that, allows you to go above set, such and such power above 125 or whatever. But anyhow... At 50, you're doing your, your standard damage. As it goes past 50, and that's at the moment it fires, it will do more damage. And as it goes below 50, again, at the moment that you fire, it will do a little less damage. Um, I believe, well, actually, let's look at the um, settings here. Just close this. Okay, here, if you click that, okay, let me do that again. Okay, here's normal. Right, this, these are your standard stuff. Like this one will set it to attack. It's going to set it up to 100, 50, 25, 25. Now these four numbers cannot go beyond 200 total. 100 plus 50 is 150 plus 25 plus 25 is 200. All right, so you have 200 points that you can distribute between the four settings. So if you have it set to attack, it's set to 100. Now 100 is the um, standard that it will charge up to. It will draw 100 power from, from the warp core. The shields will draw 50 power, 
and these will draw 25 power each. Um, however, you'll notice that, that I'm currently at, what is that, 105? Yeah, 105 out of 100. Depending on your skills and your equipments, you can get a bonus to your current. This is what this is. This is current. And this is maximum. Um, you can get a bonus to what your current power is. So you can actually go over this maximum very easily. Uh, let's see. What do I have that's allowing me to go over that? Do I have any? Is this just going to be? Uh, that's just power transfer rate. Right? Actually, the, this engineering console, the um, EP Electroplasma System Flow Regulator Mark 10, these are important because they increase the power transfer rate. What that means is we're going to use weapons as an example. Okay, I've got 105 weapons power. But every time I fire these these um these beams here, my tetron arrays and whatnot, not the, not the torpedoes, not the mines, but the, the beams, the energy weapons. Every time they fire, they take away from the current level, which I believe is 10. I believe they take away 10. That's what I'm trying to say there. Yeah, 10 weapon power, two self Wallace weapons firing. So when it fires, it uses 10 power. All right. To put it in EverQuest terms, this is your 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 mana. And every time you, you fire this, you're using a little bit of your mana. But your mana will recharge. And that's what this, um, this power transfer rate is. You have so much power generated by your, your warp core or your singularity core or what, basically by the engine. And it takes a couple of seconds for your power levels to reflect that, that power. They're constantly drawing. Now, like I said, this is set to 100, so it's going to constantly try to draw a total of 100 power from the warp core. But every time I fire, I use 10 points. Okay, so if I fire both of these weapons, pew pew, then it's going to go down to what, 85. And it's going to take a couple seconds for it to go back up because it's going to draw that power back from the uh, warp core again. The power's there, it just takes a few seconds to go from the warp core to the, the subsystem. These are your subsystems. Um, same with shields. Uh, shields are a little bit different from weapons, but it's kind of like in the reverse. The higher they, they go past 50, the more the damage they'll block. The lower they go, the less damage they'll block. Um, engine affects how fast you're going at any given throttle. Basically, um, at 50 out of 50, you'll be going at your, your normal speed, at full throttle. Okay, let's go into speed mode. Woo, look at me, I'm going woo. All right, that's what, what engine power affects. It affects how fast you're going at, the, at your throttle setting. It's not like a car. A car, when you're going 75 miles per hour, you're going 75 miles per hour. But a starship, you don't go 75 miles per hour. You go full throttle. You go half throttle. You go three quarters throttle. You go somewhere in between like this. Oops. If I can. No, I can't. Oh, there we go. There you go. Mm, see, you can, you can set it. And that's what engine power affects. It affects how fast you're going at whatever throttle setting you're at. See, right now I'm going at warp 5.65. It's about roughly half throttle. Let's go full throttle. Oh, there we go. Now I'm going at full speed. Full speed is, oops, my mouse moved. Damn it. 9.97. That's my maximum warp speed right now. In fact, if we go full stop and we look at my little, um, my little warp core, maximum warp factor, 9.97. Maximum speed modifier by sector space speed skill, blah, blah, blah. So, now let's know what your maximum speed is out here in, in the sector map. So at full throttle, I'll be going 9.97. Right now in combat, see this this is not your in combat speed. This is your sector speed. But if, if you're actually in a battle, in, in a, in a, um, in a uh, if you're in a space map, you're not going warp speed. You're going like below impulse. You don't you don't fight battles at warp speed. You fight battles at impulse. Um, basically. Engine speed will, will affect how fast you're moving. The faster you're moving, the more defensive you are. The more defensive you are, the less likely they are to hit you, etc., etc. Auxiliary power affects, um, well, like all sorts of stuff. I'm not sure exactly what the entire list is specifically. Um, I know it affects things like uh, your your um, special science abilities that do damage, like uh, my gravity well. Is that gravity well? Not scramble sensors. Oh, no, this is a new ship. I don't have gravity well anymore. Hmm. Stuff like uh, this, your acetone beam, which does um, 
radiation damage and stuff like that, okay, your auxiliary power will affect that. Now you have abilities that you can you can use that will temporarily increase your power levels, like things like um, emergency power to uh, weapons or um, emergency power to auxiliary, whatnot. That will affect whichever subsystem it specifies. Like emergency power to shields will increase your shield power. Weapons will increase your weapon power. Engine increase your engine. Blah blah blah. Simple stuff. Now, once again, let's close this. Go here. Boom. Number three allows you to manually set what the levels are. Because remember, I am using attack right now. This is balance. It'll set it to just 50 all the way down. You see that how they're changing? They will rapidly drain when the um, the current level or the max the the current setting is lower than what your ma what your um, what your current energy is. Let me say that again because I did a horrible job saying that. My brain's just being really stupid today because it turns out I might be allergic to potatoes after after all this this time of wondering what the hell my mystery malady is. It might actually be a potato allergy of all threes, which would suck because I like my beef stew and it's one of the few f few cheap foods that I can get that doesn't consistently make me sick. But if I am allergic to potatoes, I'm going to have to stop eating it because beef stew has a lot of potatoes in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyhow, um, what was I saying? Right. This is your setting. This is your current power. If your setting is below your current power, your current power will start to rapidly drop until it is more in line with what your current setting is. I.e., when I'm up here, okay, see how it's slowly climbing? Again, that's your power transfer rate. The more power transfer rate you have, the faster it's going to go up. The less power transfer rate you have, the more you're going to have to wait in between each tick. Again, it's like an EQ. When you're using power in combat, your power bar goes down, goes down, goes down, goes down, goes down. But it does regenerate so much per tick. When you're out of combat, it regenerates a lot more per tick. When you're in combat, it doesn't regenerate as fast. And this is similar, I, I believe. Um, let's see now. And this is defense. Once again, it's going to focus on your shields and your attack, too. And it doesn't put any um, emphasis on the bottom two, engines or auxiliary. And this is engines. It's going to put everything into engines. And then a little bit of attack, and then again, shields and auxiliary get the short end of the stick there. But there's also balance, which you know, just nice and even. And you can, if you want, set it up yourself. Let's go to number three, and you can you can set it, and you'll notice that there's a lock icon right here. The reason there's a lock icon is because of this. I want my attack power set to this. Okay. But actually, no, let's let's max it. Let's crank it all the way up. Okay, it's at the maximum, which is what's the maximum? Actually, it's a little bit over the maximum. There's that little green bar right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. There's a little green bar. Okay, I'm I'm set to 100, but I can go to 105 due to um, skills and whatnot. But if I move these, see these are all. This is 35. This one's 35, and this one is set to 30. All right, so if I crank these up it's going to take back from the weapons power. That's what the lock icon's for. So, okay, let's say I've got this set. I don't want this to change. Lock it. Now it can only take from these two if I want to move weapons back up. All right, it cannot take from this one because this one is locked. This one's set. Don't touch this is what you're telling the game. That's what the lock icon does. Yay. Okay, let's, what's this one? Let's set the preset to current values, and this is revert, I believe. Yeah, reset. Okay, let's go back. I want my weapons power up. And then we'll lock it there. Don't touch my weapons power. I want my shield power up. And there is, of course, a um, minimum. Which, I believe, yeah, it's 15. 15 is the minimum you can set them to. However, again, due to, oops, It won't let me because I can't, it can't it can't adjust any of the other power levels. But if I unlock this one now, it can readjust that one. There we go. Now let's take a look and see what that puts us at. Fifty-five. 
15, 35, 75, 75. See, say so I've got a little, a little bit better defense than standard, a little bit better attack than standard. My engines haven't been affected too badly, but my auxiliary power is my minimum, which may or may not be the wisest choice. And I can just overwrite them just by clicking these. These are all, these are preset custom or not custom. These are these are preset to um, those standard values. Again, this one favors attack, shields, engine, and balance. You'll notice that nothing favors auxiliary because auxiliary is not a main power. Um, I'm going to have to do some research on auxiliary power so I can tell you exactly what it does because I don't remember. It's been years since I looked that up. But auxiliary power, again, it affects, it affects your abilities that aren't affected by equipment, as I recall. Like, whoops, weapons and whatnot. It'll affect things like your, it should affect things like your control effects, your, um, your shield drains, things like that. And of course, you've got batteries. Batteries will temporarily boost these. Um, I have an ability that will. What does it do? I believe it actually adds power to all subsystems whenever I use a battery. But what batteries do, put simply, enemy attacks can knock out your subsystems. For example, if an enemy knocks your shield subsystem out, your shields go down. You don't have shields. And they will stay down for a certain amount of time. It's like a regular debuff, just like in EverQuest. You know, someone hits you with poison, you're going to start taking damage over time until the poison wears off. Well, in this case, someone just hit you with, with no shields, and you're not going to have shields until the debuff wears off. However, if you use a shield battery, shield battery repairs offline shield systems. Weapons battery does the same thing for weapons. Auxiliary does the same thing for auxiliary, and engine does the same thing for engine. They also will give you a temporary boost to that system's power level, for however long the, the battery lasts. Like in this case, it's 20 seconds. 75 engine power for 20 seconds. Um, there is a skill somewhere around here. Uh, I can't remember if it was on the bottom or if it was on the top. I believe that would be under engineering, though. So why am I looking at the very bottom? Yeah, battery expertise increases the duration of most battery and device effects by 100%. So most batteries last for 10 seconds. Oops. But, you know, mine lasts for 20 seconds because I have the one that doubles the, the duration. Yay. Which means I have a lot of battery power for 20 seconds. 75 on my shield for, you know, if, if I'm getting pounded really bad, I click this, my shield power goes way back up. And that's good because the higher it is, the faster your shields regenerate, I believe. I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but it does affect the damage resistance of the shields. So less damage will be coming through. And that's good, especially when you're getting your ass kicked because that's when you really need your damage resistance. Um, what was I saying? All right, there is a skill that will um, improve what batteries do. Like there was one ability that when you use a battery... Again, I don't know where... Oh, maybe it's traits. It might have been under traits. I don't remember. Let me just look over these real fast. Traits can also change, um, change these numbers, too. Like, uh, for example... Let's click this one. Okay. Where, oh, where is that trait? There is a trait that will increase... Ah, here it is, Warp Theorist. Plus Warp Core Potential and EPS. Plus Subsystem Power, plus Power Transfer Rate. Let's look at the details. All right. Space Trait. Improves your Warp Core Potential Skill, which increases all power levels of your ship. These right here. Also improves Electroplasma Systems, which improves power transfer and regeneration rates aboard your ship. Again, how quickly these refill and change and all that stuff. Okay. Again, warp core potential improves power levels. All right, so actually that should be over here somewhere. That's electroplasma, that's impulse expertise, that's no, 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 where is it? Damage control, that's your regeneration. Office, okay, here's one of the skills. Offensive subsystem tuning. This skill improves the amount of subsystem power available in your weapons and engine subsystems. Okay, and then down here, uh, plus, oh yeah, 
if you look in the yellow there, plus 4.8 weapons and engine subsystem power, which I believe is rounded down. So it's plus 4, basically. But this one further improves the weapons by 3.2. So this one was 4.8 plus 3.2. That would be 7. No, that would be 8. Total weapon subsystem power bonus plus 8. And this one will do the same thing for engines. And then over here, you got shields and auxiliary power. Each point of auxiliary subsystem power provides a 1% recharge time reduction for hangar pets, as well as providing bonuses to the effectiveness of many abilities. See, there's a generic description of what auxiliary power does. Is this the electro? Oh, warp core potential. Here we go. This skill improves the amount of subsystem power available in all four of your subsystems, which in my case is plus three to all subsystem power. Yay. And this increases that bonus to plus five. What's this one do? Warp core efficiency, which is, okay, this one is a, dyna a dynamic increase, depending on what your, your settings are at. Um, any sub okay, this skill provides additional subsystem power to any subsystem that is set below 75, which in this case would be all of them because they're all set to 50. But, oops, get that off there. Um, the bonus starts at zero when your subsystem target is set at 75 and scales up to plus 10 when your subsystem target is set at 15. Okay, so if I set all of these, well, you can't do that, but if I were to set, for example, auxiliary power to 15, I would get plus 10 to that, so it would be 25, basically. And if weapons power were at 75, it would get plus 0. However, there's also this over here, which would give it plus 8. Yay! Anyways, this is more advanced stuff. I mean, learning it now wouldn't hurt, but it's not as big of a deal in the early levels of the game because you're fighting low-level enemies. And um, having your weapons power at 50 is, is fine, even if you're, you're draining tons of power off of them because you're firing so rapidly. Not a big deal. You're still going to be tearing through the enemies pretty, pretty quickly because, again, they're a lower level. So your damage might be lower, but so are their hit points and resistances. But in the higher level, having, you know, in, in the higher stages of the game, having higher power levels is important because, I mean, there are enemies out there that can pretty much one-shot me if I'm at this setting right now. I mean, you'll, you'll see one-shot just like completely blow through my shields and my hole will be taking massive damage due to the bleed-through because I don't have squat for um, damage resistance. And I won't be doing as much damage against the enemies because I don't have much of a bonus to begin with. 55 is what I'm currently set, so I get a little bit better than what the, the average shot would be for my, for my current weapon systems. Anyhow, that's basically the power levels in a nutshell. Again, so... Weapons affect your energy weapons, not your torpedoes or your mines. Basically, check the weapons you have equipped. Like this torpedo, what does it do? It does... Okay, no, wait. That one... That one does Polaron damage. That is a torpedo launcher, though, so, you know, we're... Oh, okay, here's a torpedo. These do kinetic damage, so they don't... You don't have to worry about it. And here's my mines. They do kinetic damage. Again, you don't have to worry about your weapons power. If you were to make just nothing but torpedoes and mines on a boat, you would not need any weapons power at all because these weapons are not affected by weapons power. They're not affected by having your weapon subsystem knocked offline either, as far as I'm aware. Um, but if your weapon subsystems are knocked offline, I can't fire this, I can't fire this, I can't fire this, I can't fire that, and I can't fire that. And I don't think I can fire this because it is a torpedo, but it doesn't do kinetic damage, so it might actually... No, it doesn't say that it uses power, though. Huh. Let's see, it has polar on damage. And you always check the, um, always check this, the detail here. Okay. To target, 20% chance, minus 34.7 to all current power levels for five seconds. So that's, that's what, um, polar on weapons can do. That's a special ability that they have. They may or they may not proc, and if they proc, they will drain all power levels for a few seconds off the enemy target. Okay, skills that affect this ability start ship projectile weapon training. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is this is a torpedo weapon, and so it should not be affected by your weapons 
power level at all. But these guys, your, your beam arrays, these are energy weapons and they are affected by your, your weapons power. And this is this, these are the set bonuses here. What they do. Scatter volley, rapid fire. Oh neat. Fire at will or beam over beam overload. Okay. Torpedo spread, torpedo high yield, blah blah blah. Anyhow. So once again, the proc is right here. Two target. That's telling you this will hit the target for 30, 34.7 points of power power levels, power level damage for five seconds on a 20% chance. So if this if this weapon were to hit me, it would basically cut all my power levels by more than half for five seconds. So it's kind of a big deal to me at my current power levels. And of course your turning rate is affected by things like uh, again your, your skills. Um, let's see, is this impulse expertise? This affects my turn rate and my total speed. And as I mentioned before, you do not have to be an engineer to pick engineering skills. You do not have to be a scientist to pick science skills. You don't have to be a tactical officer to pick tactical skills. And as I'm a science officer, let's take a look at, at me here. Okay, Romulan Republic, science officer. Science officer. Look at the skills. I've spent 10 in engineering, 10 in science, and 26 in tactical. Okay. All these, all this means, this basically tells you like what type of skill it is. Engineering affects like the mechanical aspect of, of your, your ship abilities, like being able to turn the ship, how quickly you, um, you, you heal your, your hull, how much hull you have, power levels, stuff like that. You know, basically stuff that, stuff that the engineers would do on your ship. Science stuff, it, again, stuff like shields, um, how much damage they block, how many shields you have, how how rapidly you can restore your shields with your abilities. This stuff like your your sensors, long range targeting ability, how much how much weapon damage bleeds off due to range. Stuff like um, shield hardness, shield regeneration. I got a little shield regeneration there just because. Uh, what's this? Um, drain expertise, control expertise. And this also this isn't just this isn't just your drain expertise. It's also your resistance to drain attacks and control attacks. Then up here you got like shield capacity, shield restoration, and then tactical stuff like projectile weapons do more damage, energy weapons do more damage, things like um, critical hit chance, um, critical hit severity, um, what's this stuff? Shield penetration, armor penetration, or let's get hull penetration, and then down here we got things like tactical ability refresh. So for my tactical officer, his abilities refresh faster. And then we got coordination protocols. These affect your, your pets. However, not just pets. They also affect um, your allies. It makes a little thing out here. Plus 20% accuracy and base damage for hangar pets, but plus 5% accuracy and base damage for all other teammates and summoned allies. So pets does not just mean the stuff that you summon. It also means like NPC allies for missions, um, teammates when you go into like one of these, which I, I thought that would be useful to have. A little bit of extra damage. And accuracy for my teammates and stuff like that. And again, traits. You can also select different traits, the space traits specifically. Just click on it and it will allow you to select them. You cannot be in battle when you select this stuff, but you can, um, like for example, I'm an operative, which gives me more crit chance, more crit severity. I can turn it off and I can have nanite repair matrix. Automatic hole heal when haul, when hole below 50%. Uh, May trigger once every 90 seconds. Hmm. And it will heal 8,000 hit points, which probably is dependent on your level and whatnot. But let's go back to operative because I do like critical hits. And then there's also starship traits. I have one more slot, but I don't have any more traits to pick. But this one comes from my specialization, which is in your skills area. Pilot. All right. I'm a pilot. And as a pilot, where is 
Where is that trait? Bob and weave, no. No. Probably get it from down here somewhere. Yeah. Pedal to the metal. Starship trait. So once you've unlocked this one, number four, which is you get this after spending 15, 15 points in the specialization, you get pedal to the metal, which is a starship trait. So I've got it right here. What's that do? Plus 1% all damage bonus per two seconds spent at full throttle, up to plus 10% maximum. All bonus immediately lost if your throttle is dropped. So basically, if there's an enemy that's out of range, I can hit full impulse power if I'm out of combat and go towards it and wait until I get within range and then just automatically fire, which instantly stops your throttle. And for every, every two seconds I spent at full throttle, I get a 1% bonus to my weapons. Was it 1%? I think it was 1%. Yeah, 1%, to a maximum of, of 10%. And then the moment my throttle drops, that bonus is lost. So if I hit the space bar, if I, if I have a target, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, again, I'm starting, my brain's just scrambled right now. If I have a target that's out of range and I'm currently out of combat, like for example, in the board, actually, let's do a board race real fast. I'll just, it's better to demonstrate. This ship, by the way, is not completely, I haven't completely equipped it yet, so it's um, not even remotely close to optimal. Okay, now we'll just wait. Basically, what this, this ability does, this trait, is if I'm using full impulse power in combat to close the, difference, close the distance to an enemy, and instead of dropping out throttle manually, if I, if I just target it and attack it while I'm at full throttle. The moment you're within range, your weapons will fire. And the moment your weapons fire, you will drop out. Oh, here we go. You'll drop out of full throttle. Here, I'll just show you. Okay, good. There are some other... Well, there's at least one other player in here. So we're probably going after that guy. No, no. We're going after that guy. Okay, watch this. I've got him targeted. I'm not going to manually turn off. I'm just going to hit spacebar. So as soon as I'm close enough to fire, see, it instantly drops you out. So that first shot got bonus damage. Not very much because it didn't take very long to get here. But then the, but then the bonus damage is dropped because I'm no longer at full throttle. Oh, whoops. I forgot. I've got pets now. See, I'm not within range yet, but as soon as I am, I'm going to fire. Oh, these aren't fighters. These are bigger ships. Cool. All right, where's the next target? Where are you guys going? Because I don't want to take these guys on by myself. They will annihilate me. Okay, they're going up there. So we'll go up there with them. No, we'll go over here instead because they're getting killed up there. Pass. Pass. Weapon damage bonus was a little bit higher this time because it took me longer to get to them. Pew, pew, pew. Good, they're missing me. That's good. And if you hit spacebar, it'll just automatically select the next nearest target, I believe. That you're looking at. Nothing in range, so I'm not I'm hitting spacebar, but nothing's happening. And I will go after this scopes. Don't need that. Hmm? Where are you guys going? They're probably wondering the same thing about me. Oh, there's another bad guy up there.
Where is it? There it is. Turn a little sharper, please. Holy crap. There we go. Probably going full impulse is you don't turn very quickly. But, let's get them. Well, bonus damage. Yay! Yay! Scramble those sensors. Probably won't work, but... Scramble sensors is a charm ability, basically. Oh. That was tough. Alright, what was I doing? I was doing temporal this time, wasn't I? Temporal marks, yes. Uh, exit to set to switch. So yeah, that's basically what Pedal the Metal does. It's a small damage bonus when you use full impulse to attack an enemy. It comes in handy in situations like this. Alright, let's look at what I got. When you do these events, you get like a little crate here. This is a um, research and development crate. It's a reward, uh, research and development material reward package. Basically, it gives you crafting materials. So you got crafting materials in here. So if I open this, dun, 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 I got some stuff. Z particle, Verger, Vergeron particle, hexafluorine gas. Yeah. Now it goes in here. Yay. And I also got a mark package for um, my reputation stuff. Oh. Okay, those are events. Somewhere around here I have, maybe I should have a, um, I should have somewhere in here a um, collect rewards option. I think. Ah, here it is. Task Force Omega. This is, this is the Borg Task Force. Uh, that's right, I was working on them a little bit. So collect reward, I'll get some reputation, which will increase my um, increase my, my distance traveled on my path to the next tier. Not very much though. I am at night no wait, no, I'm at eighteen thousand reputation. I can't do any of the cool stuff though because I'm still tier two. And just to show you how you do reputation stuff that isn't event wise. Let's look at my assets. How many Omega do I have? I got quite a few marks. Cool. All right, so it's usually a select active, and then you pick one of these uh, things. This is how long you have to wait before you can do it again. 20 hours, so it's basically, it says daily, so there you go. But because it takes longer, it has bigger rewards. This one gives you 2,500 reputation. And I can't make out that number. It's way too small of a font for my eyes to handle right now. And then you also get a, um, a box. A box, yeah, you know, this box contains like special task force equipment that you can use for those types of things. Like these are anti Borg weapons. I have an anti, is this it? Yeah. Anti Borg, anti proton dual pistols, Mark 11. See? And it does extra damage to the Borg and it has better critical hit chance. Yay! And that's the type of stuff that you can get from these things. So here, let me show you. Oh, here's the hourly one. You can do this every hour. The rewards are less though. You still get a box, but you get like, was it 200? Yeah, 200 Omega Special Task Force Reputation. And then you have the Mako Personal Shield Mark 12 and stuff like that. You can get these. Adapted Mako Deflector. This Again, this is one of those space sets that has a, um, a um, appearance. I believe this one does too, Soul Defense. Let me just real quick um, go forward and see if it changes. I am not certain. I'm zoomed way out. Yeah, I think I think my minus cells are a different color. Not now. Let's 
So let's do a reputation mission real fast, show you how it's done. So select active. Once again, you select the one. I'm going to do this one because why not? Th they do have requirements though. You, this is how much you have to contribute to them. 15,000 energy credits, 30 Omega Marks, 2,000 expertise. Okay, now I've selected it, so it's there. Now all I have to do is go, boop, and I can contribute to it. You don't have to contribute it all at once, but you do have to fill these up. So this is how much expertise I have. 1.2 million. I need 2,000, so no big deal. Just do the whole thing. And I need 15,000 energy credits. I've got... Mm, what is that? I can't quite make that out. My eyes are really bad this morning. Or not this morning, this afternoon. Anyways, I got plenty. I've got almost a million energy credits, so sure. And then marks, I've got almost 1,200 marks, and I need 30. There. And these will slowly fill up, and you see, I got my reward box. Yay! And I, once once, once the, the timer's done, then I can claim the rest of my rewards, which will be the, you know, the, the um, reputation and whatnot. See, my, I haven't changed yet. My reputation is still 18,000. So this will take me over to 20,000. I need 32,000 reputation to get tier 3. Tier 4 is 50,000, or 60,000, I'm sorry. Tier 5 is at 100,000. And that's how you do your reputation stuff. Here, let's open the box and see what I get. Ooh, ooh, it's, it's a tier 2 reward. Because I'm tier 2. I got an anti-prog, anti-borg, anti anti-proton stun pistol mark 11. Borg critical hit dot 3. And it's um, very rare because it's purple. And it's got three little special bonuses to it. Yay! Let's take a look at them. So what are the special bonuses? Let's take a look. We have details. All right. Details. Okay, it's um, Borg, so it's going to do extra damage to Borg. It's critical hit, so it's going to have extra critical hit chance. Dot three, which means it puts a dot on the enemy. Ten additional damage versus Borg, dealt as kinetic damage, so they can't adapt to it. Yay! Um, plus two percent critical chance. Yay! And then um, where's? Ah, here it is. Two percent chance. A two and a half percent chance for five point one radiation damage per second for 15 seconds in a 10 meter radius. So, pew pew pew, I got a better chance to critical hit the board. Pew pew pew, it does extra damage dealt as kinetic damage, which they cannot adapt to, so that's cool. Pew pew pew, and then it might actually hit them with a radiation dot, which will slowly damage their, their health, I believe, for um, 15 seconds. So that's, what, five, six, about 75 points of damage, which, you yeah, well, yeah, 75 points of damage. In a 10 meter radiance, so if they're grouped together, it hit them all. So yay! And I'll be going pew 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 pew. And it's anti-proton, so it has it has more critical severity. Notice it's got the the critical severity bonus. That's what anti-protons do. They crit harder. And they're red and black when you shoot them. Pew pew pew. So yeah, that about covers it for this this uh, episode. But again, you know, power levels. They change them down here. Um, weapons are pretty important for combat. Shields are definitely important for combat. Engines are also important for combat because, again, the slower you're moving, the more the more easily you can be hit. So it affects your defensive ability. Um, auxiliary, if you're using a lot of special abilities like your, um, what is this, acetone? Yeah, ac oh, acetone beam. And the things like um, scramble sensors and your hangar pets and whatnot. Those are affected by your auxiliary power, so the more that you have, the more effective they'll be. The more weapons you have, the more effective your, your energy weapons will be. I want to stress that energy weapons, things like mines and torpedoes, don't, they, they don't give a fuck. They don't care. It's basically you're, you're hucking a, a rock at them. A really big rock, but a rock nonetheless. Um, again, you can just completely fill a ship with torpedoes. Probably not the best idea in the world because they do have um, overlapping recharge times. But, uh, yeah. You wouldn't have to worry about your weapons power. So then you would effectively only have three power levels that you had to worry about. You could completely just, just 
put this one on its absolute minimum and use that um, those 50 points of potential power, split them between these three. So there you have it. But that should do it for that. So I will catch you guys later. Um, I haven't seen you for a while, Angela, so I hope things are going okay. A uh, quick fire update. We're almost at 50% containment as of 7 o'clock this morning. So go, go, go. But the fire is currently located on steep inclines with lots of with lots of steep drainage zones and we've got crosswind conditions which are making it difficult to to get full containment on it but they're they're fighting it uh the red flag alert was taken down saturday or sunday i can't remember which and um yeah we're we're basically just kind of sitting here in a holding pattern honestly there's not a whole lot different from today or there's not a whole lot different on today from a normal day without a fire, except there's a lot of smoke and ash in the air. I mean, it can be really, really easy to forget about the fire when it's as far away as it is. But when the wind picks up, we get a very swift reminder when the sky turns bright red. I mean, the sun is just like bright red. It's like a blood moon sun right now. It's kind of cool looking, actually. But that's because there's just so much ash and, and, and smoke in the, in the sky. But yeah. Other than that, not much to report, so I will catch you all later. Take care, and peace out.